Hey y'all, it's Hannah and Jeremy with the Savory Suitcase. This week we embark on our final stop on our Florida summer vacation series, Scalloping in Crystal River. We booked our charter through Manatee Tour and Dive. You may remember the last time we were in Crystal River, we were swimming with manatees. Today, the weather is about 60 degrees warmer than it was in January. Scalloping season is generally July through September, but can be shorter depending on the location. The Florida Fish and Wildlife has a really good page about the season and the daily bag limit. We will link it down in the description. Once our captain had taken us out into the open waters, we found a spot we hoped would be lucky and got geared up. The charter we booked included all snorkel gear, a bag for your scallops, and even ice for us to bring them home. They also helped us clean the scallops, but more on that later. Scallops are found sitting on top of or just slightly nestled into the seagrass, which sounds like it would make them easy to spot, but certainly was not at first. There are a lot of factors that can make them easier to spot, like how clear the water is, how deep the grass is, or even how sunny of a day it might be. The crew of our charter got in and swam with us. They ended up spotting the first few scallops and helped point them out to us. The scallops you see on the dinner table is actually the mussel found at the center of the shell. The blue dot around the shells are their eyes and they propel themselves by opening and closing their shells. over and I dive the <laughs> Let me see. He's like, over here, over here. It's puffed up. It's, he's open. He's angry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I want more now. That was exhilarating. <laughs> Thank you.
all by myself. I caught this one all by myself. I caught one all by myself. As is typical with Florida weather, we did have a small storm roll in and we got back on the boat to move towards sunnier skies. The second place we anchored was a few feet deeper and made it even more difficult to spot the scallops from the surface. It really is like an Easter egg hunt in the Gulf of Mexico. After a few more hours of searching, it was time for us to head back to shore. We put our harvest into a live well, and it turns out it wasn't exactly bountiful. I only caught five. A couple of boys, you could have yourself a cocktail. <laughs> The crew showed us how to clean the scallops and prepare to eat them by removing the dark part around the scallop meat. They even encourage us to try a raw one. Does it just taste like salt food? Salt water? No. Salt? Uh, seafood? It's not bad, right? It's sweet. Yeah. yeah. Originally, we had planned to go early in the season, but weather had canceled our two prior attempts. So we were later in the season, which could be why we didn't find quite as many. But honestly, it was such a fun experience, we didn't mind the outcome. When we got home, we decided to make ceviche with our fresh caught scallops. We washed them extremely well, considering about two hours ago, they looked like this. And then we got to work on our ceviche. 
We will put a full recipe in the description down below, but generally ceviche has two components, the acid or marinade to cook the fish and the vegetables to pair it with. Ceviche usually gets lumped in with dishes like sushi and tuna tartare as being completely raw. However, ceviche is actually fully cooked. The acidity in the lime juice reacts with the fish, or the scallop protein in this case, and causes it to become opaque and firm while absorbing the flavor. For the scientific crowd, this is called denaturing, a process that you're probably more familiar with using heat or traditional cooking methods. The reaction created makes it safe to eat for almost anyone, with only a few caveats. If you are at higher risk for complications from foodborne illness, like anyone who may be pregnant or immunocompromised, you might want to skip this meal. Just know you can also look up recipes that involve fully cooking the seafood in either hot water or steaming prior to making your ceviche, which makes it safe for everyone to eat. Our marinade was created with the juice and zest of oranges and limes. You do want to be sure to let your seafood sit in these citrus juices for at least an hour to properly cook them. This works out perfectly as it's about the time that it takes you to prep the rest of the ingredients for your ceviche. We chilled the scallops down with an ice bath while they marinated or you can just put them in the fridge. The vegetables are really where you can customize this recipe to your liking. The traditional ingredients include bell peppers of any color of your choosing, and onions, and maybe something refreshing like cilantro or fresh parsley. Something creamy like diced avocados, something spicy like a habanero pepper, or a little less spicy like a jalapeno. Once everything is chopped and your scallops have marinated for at least an hour, it's time to combine everything together.
be sure to taste for seasoning. You can add some salt, some black pepper, some olive oil, and even a little bit of sugar to balance out the acid. Be sure to enjoy your fresh ceviche with your favorite chip or toasted bread. Thank you for joining us this summer. We had some amazing experiences and loved sharing them with you. Please take a quick second to like this video and subscribe if you haven't, and we will see you on the next adventure.